Today, I'd like to introduce you to Sir Isaac Newton. Sir Isaac, this is Bob. Is he ignoring us? He's an important man. He's got a lot on his mind. He... He's the genius who invented gravity, right? Well, he discovered it. He didn't invent it. Where did he discover it? You see, Newton loved puzzles. In his younger days, he was the sort of fellow who leans into the wind with his coattails out to see how far he could lean before he fell over. Yeah? I also tried to fly once, and I was using nothing but sheer physical willpower. I really feel like I might be a genius too. Ah, but Bob, he wasn't trying to fly. Jump forward many years. Newton is now a grown-up, and he continues to be fascinated with the way things work. We see him here, hard at work, observing and thinking. Yeah, I can see that. What's he thinking about? He's thinking about the planets. You see that little dot up there? That's one of them. He's thinking about the planets, and he's wondering why they're moving around the sun. You see, the Earth is a bit like a tennis ball on a string. It's going around the sun. Gosh, that was cool. How did you do that? Well, we're in a cartoon, aren't we? We can do what we like. But that's the point, you see. Newton lived in the real world. He knew that there had to be an actual force holding the planet in its orbit. You see right now? There he is, spinning the ball. And he's pulling on the string. If he's not pulling on that string, watch what happens. You see? No pulling force, and it's bye-bye planet. Gosh, that's kind of astronomical, isn't it? Astronomical. Good pun. Pun? Okay, stay with me here. Newton was a great mathematician and inventor. He was determined to solve the mystery. Why do planets stay in orbit? What's stopping them from flying off into space? It's gravity! I knew you'd get it. It's gravity. Obvious, really. Obvious now, but not back then. Back then, there was no reason to assume that the force that holds planets in orbit is the same force as the one that holds us down here on Earth. That is the work of a genius. I'm not sure if I get you, but carry on. The story goes that one day, Sir Isaac was puzzling away, thinking about the planets, while sitting under an apple tree. The apples are ripe, and then do you know what? One falls on his head. Ow! Not good. But it was good. It gave him his big idea. And actually, we don't know for sure that it even did fall on his head. Maybe it just fell beside him. So Newton watched the apple fall, and he thought about the force pulling it down to the ground. And then, with a leap of mind, as befits your regular genius, he realized it's also gravity that pulls on the Earth and prevents it from leaving its orbit around the sun. Um, can you just repeat that bit? Okay. Why does an apple fall to the ground, and why does the Earth not fly off into space? You know, I think maybe I'm not a genius, because I'm not sure of the answer to that one. Bob, you literally just gave me the answer 20 seconds ago. I did? Oh! I see! Gravity! Thank goodness. Okay, so here's the next bit. You see, something else you need to know about Newton is that he believed in God. So he didn't think these forces just happened to be there. Newton believed that everything in the universe exists because of God. Yeah, that makes sense. Gravity invented by God. I like that. Exactly. So in Newton's view, gravity is God's idea. And that's what Newton found so impressive. Gravity. Worth waiting for. Get it? Wait. Very good, Bob. You really are paying attention. Okay. So, Newton's thinking, God is great. God is ingenious. If God's going to invent a force to stop planets from leaving their orbits, it's going to be... Uh, I know! I know! Gravity! Newton's idea was that God is the creator of the universe, and God came up with gravity. 
And so gravity, 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 it holds the Earth in its orbit and it pulls an apple to the ground. Why invent two forces when one will do? That's actually quite well said. Well done, Bob. Thank you. I couldn't have said it better myself. And that's the end of the story. That was the way that Sir Isaac saw science. Sir Isaac believed that God intends us to be curious and to investigate the world around us to understand it better. And the more Newton found out, the more new questions he thought of to ask. True genius. Yeah, it's good. Genius. We haven't explained everything. Like, for example, what happened to the apple? Do we know what happened to the apple? Um, actually, I don't think we do. That's what I thought. Says it all. You solve one mystery and before you know it, the next one comes along. Yes, Bob. That's the mark of a genius, you see. We can't help ourselves. Yes, Bob.